Hello and welcome to Wednesday's Look East. Coming up tonight, if you are attached to your smartphone, well, it's time to take recycling seriously. We'll explain why. But first, if we do not start recycling our old gadgets better, we are going to run out of materials to make new ones. That is the warning from the Royal Society of Chemistry based here in Cambridge. A smartphone, for example, can contain 30 elements which are mined from the earth. But all kinds of things, from pacemakers to batteries, rely on them too. Last year alone, it's estimated 57 million tonnes of electronics were thrown away. But a Suffolk company has now developed a way of using bacteria to try to recycle them. Our science correspondent Richard Westcott has the story. This warehouse is a gold mine of precious metals. Literally a gold mine buried inside unwanted machines. So this is a classic telecommunications board from an exchange and what we're looking at here is all of these little black chips which look very dull but actually contain all of the metals we want to see. So copper, tin, zinc, magnesium, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, yttrium, neodymium are all hidden inside these chips and that's what we're after. This company recycles around a thousand tonnes of old electronic kit every year. From the copper wiring to the plastic around it which goes off to become the bottom of traffic cones. But the warehouse isn't where the really clever bit happens. To get the precious and rare earth materials from the microchips they grind them into a solution of bacteria. Here's an example of how it might work. So this is cut off an old electronic circuit board. This is gold leaf. Apparently 7% of the world's gold is stuck in e-waste. So you would put this in the bacteria. The bacteria eats effectively the glue that's holding the gold on. The gold floats to the surface and floats away. And here's the after. You can see the board is completely stripped of gold. The normal recycling process either melts the circuit boards with heat or uses acid so it can have a big carbon footprint. They say their bacteria is much greener and in the lab next door they're working on making it more efficient. Bacteria are actually living organisms so we have parameters that we need to control and measure constantly. Things like pH, temperature and the nutrients we give them essentially their food. Um, if you and I were to get sick we'd, get, we'd check our temperatures and then we'd decide what to do next. Exactly the same thing, principle with the bacteria, where we check the nutrients. If the nutrient levels are good, then the bacteria can do what we want them to do, which is essentially leach out the metals from the e-waste. So it's the long-term idea, basically, to take the recycling to the businesses. They would have a little recycling plant right next to where they're making the things. Yes, that's right. Yeah, what, what we look to do is, is reduce the carbon footprint of transporting, unnecessarily transporting waste all over the country and, and uh, actually deal with it at point of use. Only a fifth of the world's e-waste is ever reused. I mean, how much have we all got tucked away in drawers? Scientists are now calling for a global effort to ramp up recycling before we run short of the precious elements to make our gadgets. Richard Westcott, BBC Look East, Suffolk. Well, I've popped out into the newsroom to join Elizabeth Ratcliffe, who's from the Royal Society of Chemistry based in Cambridge. Um, Elizabeth, you've been highlighting the shortages of a lot of these precious metals through the society. What are we most short of and what is it used in? So there are at least six elements that are naturally occurring that are in mobile phones. Um, and these are also used, so there are things like indium, tantalum, yttrium. And these are also used in things like solar panels, um, wind turbines, hip replacements, pacemakers, all sorts of things, some, even some cancer treatments. So it's really important that we conserve the supply of these elements because we won't have them for these really important applications. But hearing how we use them, Presumably demand for these metals is not going to drop. We're going to need more of them. So is recycling them actually enough? Recycling is going to be very important because at the moment um, we're running out of the, the naturally occurring supplies. So recycling is one aspect, but also we'll need to look, on, look at using less. So we always say to people, reduce, reuse, recycle. So try to consume as little as possible in terms of your, te your personal technology. And also some scientists, so chemical scientists, are looking at how to maybe replace some of these elements with more abundant elements in certain applications. But we are using these elements for a reason because they're they're very unique and they have very unique properties. Like so what? Can you give us easy. an example of one that we wouldn't really be able to switch easily? Yes, so um, tantalum is one, so it's in hearing aids and pacemakers and it's good for very, very tiny electronics. That's what it, that's what it's good for, that's why we use it and it's also mobile phones as well. And as far as I'm aware, there's nobody working on a replacement for that. 
Um, mining them, we should say, isn't easy anyway, is it? No. Because you have to mine huge, vast yes. areas and you only get a tiny amount of metal from all of that. Um, you say you're looking at alternatives. Chemists are also brilliant at manufacturing kind of new things and synthesise things. Is there anything man-made we could replace it with? Not exactly, because these elements are fundamental, so they're, they're different types of atoms, so you can't really make them from scratch. So the, the best thing we can do is use another element with similar properties that's easier to find. So we shouldn't be hanging on to old devices. We should make sure they go back into the recycling pool. Um, just very briefly, do we need government legislation, do you think, to actually drive a lot of this through? Yes, so there's only so much that we can do as consumers at this point. It's really going to need governments, retailers, manufacturers, designers, scientists working together around the world, really, to make sure that products are made in a more sustainable way and made with end-of-life recycling um, in mind. Also longer, longer life products as well. Well, people are looking to be more sustainable. Um, Elizabeth Ratcliffe, really fascinating subject. Thank you very much indeed.